Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Matthew Robinson and welcome to another episode of Project Talks. Now, for today's episode, I'm not going to be talking about anything I'm working on, at least not project-wise. Instead, I'm going to be talking about a little uh, media theory I came up with called Canonical Language Theory. Now, what is Canonical Language Theory, you're probably asking, or rather, you're definitely asking it. Well, ahem. <clears throat> Canonical language theory has a lot in common with uh, the trope of translation convention, which tvtropes.org defines as when a group of people whose native language is not the language of the audience are speaking in their native language, but the audience hears them speaking the audience's language perfectly. So yeah, basically, my theory and translation convention are not that dissimilar. However, what made me really think about that sort of language thing in film and TV was actually a quote from Steve Odekirk's short film Thumb Wars, which of course was a parody of A New Hope. In that short, one extra thing floated onto my stuff. Uh, anyway, the extra says this in Thumb Wars, I have a question. Why is it that we all speak in British accents when we're from outer space and there's no Britain? And you know, that is a legitimate question. Like, why would these, you know, characters who are originally from a galaxy far, far away have British accents when this galaxy far, far away has no Britain? And then I started to theorize that maybe all the characters in Star Wars are not actually speaking English, but rather some sort of alien language, even though the movie is in English. I know it's a little confusing at first, but, you know, it makes sense, hopefully, the more you think about it. Uh, one obvious example I could pull from is uh, anime. Uh, specifically, let's start with this one, Black Lagoon. Now, the show is originally in Japanese. However, there's certain story beats that don't make sense in Japanese. For example, the character Shen Hua, she's Taiwanese and she speaks in that very, uh, in like that old stereotypical Chinese accent, you know, the one like that broken English, fresh off the boat accent, like shampoo, shampoo from a run the one half, or like any movie made before 1990. Uh, yeah, it's revealed in an episode that she speaks like that purple purposefully because she considers herself pure Taiwanese and hates the fact that she has to speak in English. At least that's how the dialogue is in the original Japanese track. In the English job, the uh, conversation is exactly the same, except now it's actually in English. So this is a case where an English dub would just make sense story-wise. Oh good, I thought the box was broken. I, bu I bought this used. Now, like I said, there are certain um, ways, you know, the flexibility of language in certain anime work. Uh, for example, here are some shows. Uh, Azumanga Dayo, Samurai Champloo, and Ghost Stories. Now, there are other shows like School Rumble, Lucky Star, Basilisk, Shigarui, Death Frenzy, uh, that do take place in Japan and are very steeped in Japan's own culture and history and mythology and whatnot. So, it doesn't matter what language these shows are in, the characters are speaking Japanese. Even in the English dub, even though we hear English being spoken, the characters are j speaking Japanese because that just makes sense culturally. Uh, there are a few other examples I have in here. Like, there are shows like Helsing, or uh, Black Butler, and even this movie, Steam Boy, that take place in England. You know, so, of course, an English dub would actually make sense for these because region-wise and culture-wise, in context of where the story is set, the characters are speaking English. 
And then you have other shows like this, Bacano, or um, what's it called, uh, Chrono Crusade, which both take place uh, in America during Prohibition. So once again, the English makes sense. You know, like for these shows, even though they were originally in Japanese, the characters are and have always been speaking English because that's what the language is region-wise and culturally. But then we kind of get into like the weird territory, right? Where there are certain shows like, uh, sorry for all the noise, you know, there are shows like uh, Ergo Proxy, Trigun, uh, Kino's Journey, and other shows that don't take place anywhere in the real world, but take place in like a very, uh, in a land that's very Eurocentric. So that's another case where an English dub would make sense. But then you have shows that don't take place in an English-speaking region or Japan, such as this. Uh, the war, which takes place in France, so of course everyone would be speaking French. And everyone is speaking French, regardless of whether the, you watch the show in Japanese or English. I mean, I guess other than Kirika. Now, there are other examples besides anime of this. The wind's picking up. Such as Stanley Kubrick's Paths of Glory. Which, yes, everyone, all the soldiers are supposed to be French, but they do not sound very French at all. Like, I think Kirk Douglas is like the least French person in any movie. Uh, Disney movies as well. You know, Pinocchio, uh, canonically, uh, you know, if you look at the book, the original book, takes place in Italy. The Jungle Book, that takes place in India. Hunchback of Notre Dame takes place in France, uh, Hercules is in Greece, and Mulan, that's in China, but all the characters, we hear English, and not Italian, Indian, French, Greece, Greek, or Chinese, and yet those are the languages the characters are actually speaking, and not English. I don't know if I made it any easier to understand, but hopefully a little bit. That is it for this video. Uh, I know I've been very slow on uploads this year. I'm still trying to get like a rhythm down. Uh, look forward to more videos as usual. And also as usual, until next time, you all just stay cool. Later.